What's up Mopar fam? I hope everybody's having a blessed day out there. Today we're going to talk about Zorro and how Zorro did at the track at The Rock in North Carolina. And my son is the one that drives that car. That's his car now. And we're going to go over the time slips, what happened, what we did.
let's get to it. All right, so at The Rock, myself, Racing Frostbite, my son, Racing Zorro, the 2014 Challenger RT 5.7 car, and my buddy Ryan, Racing Storm, we were all running in the Direct Connect Hemi class is what they call it now. Um, and basically it goes from like eight to nine second all the way up to 15 second classes um, so what you're trying to do is make three consecutive passes that are the fastest average in that class so whether you run 10s 11 12 13s 14s 15s or whatever you want to try to be the fastest in that class so for Zorro and Storm, they were both duking it out for the 13 second class. Um, and to make that happen, because both vehicles was actually going a little faster than that, uh, we were playing the game on adding weight, taking away weight, just trying to play with everything, the whole setup to make it competitive and be stout in that 13 second bracket. We have the three um, actual round passes that they count for your average uh, right here in my hand. So we're gonna break down the uh, tickets real quick, show the times and everything, kind of go over what we had to do um, to get here. Now, as most of you guys know, we just put in a new converter in the car. Uh, we put a, my son got a FTI 32 3400 stall converter that we just put in the challenger and this was the first time at the track with that new converter um, and i will say as the passes went on the car seemed to get quicker um, i believe that converter was really starting to break in and loosen up a little bit and the car started to actually perform a lot better every pass it made so this kind of made it a little challenging to get the challenger to cooperate all right so on pass one and i do want to note that the da um was pretty much averaging slightly over a thousand um and on the practice days it was actually around the 14 1500 mark um, on actual race day, because that night before um, there was a rainstorm that kind of came through and it really cooled things down. And on this pass, I believe we were um, somewhere around at a thousand or just over a thousand DA. Um, but anywho, this was round one. And as you can see, my son is in the left lane right here. And we had, he had a 189, 39, 60 foot. Uh, the car is running Nitto drag radials and he still runs the front stock tire and wheels up front. We do not have front runners on that car yet. Um, and then as we get down here to the quarter mile, it clicked off a 13059 with a six and trapped just about 105 mile an hour. So, on this pass, and it was around three o'clock in the afternoon, um, that was a good number. You know, we said, hey, if we can back this up, stay right there, like this should be pretty good. Um, we should be pretty good um, in, the, in the ballpark there. Um, and so we kind of went back to the pits and we thought about this and we said, you know, the car, you know, it's gonna be a little warmer on the next pass. DA may be a little worse. Let's pull out a little more weight and uh, see what it does on pass two. Even if we click off, you know, a high 12, you know, we're still in the game. Um, 
but we just want to try to be pretty competitive here. So uh, again, we pulled the spare tire out of the trunk. We pulled the passenger seat. We pulled the whole rear seat section, the backing and the bottom and uh, waited for round two. Um, so round two came and what we did on round two, um, he's in the left lane again and this is a couple hours later. Now we are five o'clock in the afternoon and the car uh, did a 190, 46, 60 foot um, and he clicked off a 1295, 39 at 105 76 miles an hour um, so we picked up almost a mile per hour there and um, it ran a pretty good number you know i wouldn't say we went a little too quick um, we're still good as long as past three is obviously somewhere in the 13 zone um, we were feeling pretty good right here so we kind of thought about this. It was going to be a few hours later before we get to run round three. Um, it was cooling down very fast. Uh, the sun was getting uh, kind of going down on us also, as you can see in the video, by the time we got to round three. So we kind of anticipated the car was going to go way too fast. Um, so we let more air out of the tires, um, trying to you know, make sure that we can A, hook, and two, uh, maybe slow the mile an hour down a little bit possibly. And we also put a, not the spare tire, but a full-size tire, uh, one of his street tires, full-size tire and wheel in the trunk um, for aided traction and to help slow it down. We also put the rear seat back in. We put the seat back and the bottom back in the car and we left out the passenger seat still. Uh, we kind of felt like we should be okay, should be right in that zone and get the number we want. And <laughs> the car did not cooperate. So here is round three um, after putting some weight back in the car and lowering tire pressure um, basically all in trying to slow it down some uh, the car did pretty well um, a little too good <laughs> so as you can see it is 8 30 p.m um, the sun's pretty much uh, was setting or had just set it had cooled down tremendously the da was now under a thousand so here you go as you can see we uh, he was right lane this time he's 60 footed a 180 uh, with a 16, uh, best 60 foot, I believe he had the whole entire trip. And he went a 1294.23 at 103.35 mile an hour. Now, um, you're going to be like, wow, he went too fast still with a slower mile an hour. Well, this is what happened in the video, if you, uh, if you, if you noticed right before the end of the finish line he actually lets out because his uh his personal radar was saying like he felt like he was going too fast it felt faster um so he let out early and still ran a 1294.23 which was too fast and he just barely missed it man with like a perfect record with a perfect record it was crazy so when you take all three of these passes and you average them out, his average came out to be a 12,984. Missed it. He missed the 13,0 bracket average by 0.016, guys. Literally, barely missed it. Just, oh. He was not happy, um, but the car was doing really good. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the content of Zorro. I wish we had a little bit more uh, outside footage of the car, but with all three of us up there racing in the same class at the same time, we didn't have any extra people to really get any outside content uh, besides what we had on our GoPros and uh, inside cameras. I don't think we'll be going for the 13 second uh, bracket anymore. Um, 
Definitely 12s should be very easy to go for and or maybe 11s, guys. Uh, we'll see how the car responds to all these mods coming up. Um, but it should be somewhere in that zone. So stay tuned. As always, stay safe out there. And we'll see you guys on the next one.